The homeowners insurance market in Florida is a no picnic. We're going through a real crisis here. It's a real pain point for those of us that own a home here that live in Florida because the prices just seem to be going higher and higher without any end in sight. Let's talk to a homeowners insurance agent, get real information from her. Now, a lot of the questions I'm going to be asking her today are actually questions that are coming directly from you. I think it's important that you guys get information from somebody that's actually in the industry, not just watching all these YouTube videos that try to cover the crisis right now. They're certainly informative, but there's also some YouTube videos that are not accurate. So I promise you this video is going to be very insightful, especially if you're somebody that lives here in Florida, you own your own home. And if you're somebody that's looking to purchase here, you're going to want to watch this video as well, because you're going to have to deal with homeowners insurance in one way or another. Now do me a favor. If this type of content is informative to you, like this video, it does help out the video's performance. So let's get right into this video. Thank you so much for joining today and you know, giving us your time. I really appreciate it. The last time we actually spoke, Jennifer, was about seven months ago. I actually look back. Wow. It doesn't seem like it's been that long, but it certainly has, especially because, you know, a lot has happened since then. Uh, we, sh we talked shortly after Hurricane Ian, but we didn't really understand, I think at the time, kind of the significance of what the hurricane has posed on us here in Florida, especially when it comes to homeowners insurance. And so, you know, I'm really glad that we can have an update here for all the viewers of this channel. But before we get into it, why don't you just introduce yourself really quickly, talk about your experience with the home insurance market, how long you've been in it and who you work for right now. Great. So uh, my name is Jennifer Asawala, and I've been in the insurance industry for over 20 years now, selling personal lines and property insurance for the last five years, uh, but have been involved in insurance in some way or matter uh, within the last 20 years. I'm working for Smith, Reed and Osmond. That is the name of the insurance company. And we mm -hmm. do personal lines and commercial lines there. On my channel, I get so many viewers who are very worried about the homeowners insurance market here. They're interested in moving to Florida, but you know, one of their hesitations truly is what's happening with the insurance market and the costs involved in the future. I mean, there's a lot of unknowns. And so the first question here is, you know, what do you know of the government doing in order to help the situation and you foresee things getting better in the future? So I feel like it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Um, we are seeing increases this year, so um, everybody can expect those increases. Yes, the government is doing something about it. Um, as you know, the, the 2 way Reform Act that was passed, um, that is really going to help rates, but it's going to take some time before it helps the rates. So I would say maybe a year or two before we start seeing the reflection on that. It regulates the insurance carriers. Um, it's great for us as people buying the insurance. It protects us. Do you expect prices to come back down though or is the bill merely just stabilizing the price increases in the future? So I do expect prices to go back down. But again, it's going to take a couple of years before we can see that reflection. And then, you know, we do have new carriers that are looking to come into the state. So the more competition we can get going in the state is always better. So you get the new carriers that will come in and they don't have uh, maybe the claims piled up that a carrier that's been here for a while and they could come in and offer lower rates. So that does keep the competition going. So I do believe that they will go down. They have to. Yeah, I know. I can't keep going on like this. We'll all be poor pretty soon if it does. Can you tell us specifics about Senate Bill 2A? Just yes. in a um, nutshell. Yes. So basically, each party is responsible for their own lawyer fees. Now, talking to the carriers, this is huge, where a ton of the costs come into play. So they really feel like this is going to help with the rates in the future. It also keeps the carriers accountable. They have to respond to claims. They have to get adjusters out within a certain time frame now. So it is holding them accountable where they can't just sit on something for months and months and months on end. They 
have a certain time frame they have to work in. There's also an assignment of benefits that now you're not able to do this now. People were assigning their benefits, their coverage over to roofing contractors and um, builders and things like that. That's not allowed anymore. And that was another significant cost making insurance increase. It sounds like there is hope at the end of the tunnel here. And it absolutely is. Two years from now, we should see much more stabilization in the marketplace, which is definitely something that we've all been waiting to happen. But besides the destruction of Hurricane Ian, the fraud is really the number two cause of these prices going up here in Florida. We are the number one fraud state in the United States. Nothing to be proud of there. But these litigation, um, even the 2A bill having like everyone's responsible for their own lawyer fees, that's gonna help from those lawsuits. Now, what actually drives homeowners insurance cost? I tell the viewers that a lot of it has to do with location, of course, the condition of a home. If it's a brand new house, new construction, they tend to have much more favorable homeowners insurance costs. But at the end of the day, it's always good to talk to an agent such as yourself. High level, what drives these insurance costs higher? The number one thing that the carriers are looking at right now is roof age. That is the number one thing that they are all looking at. I don't know a carrier who's not looking at that. So that's probably the main thing to look at right now. Also the age of home, what type of home it is, if, whether it's masonry, concrete block, or if is it frame? You get a better rating if it's masonry. If it's frame, it, you're rated a little bit higher. Location, absolutely. If you're buying right on the water, your rates are gonna be a little bit higher than if you're five, mil, five miles away from the coast and then you absolutely hit the nail on the head the new builds are definitely going to be your most economical way to ensure they're up to the latest code hurricane codes they're building these houses phenomenally now when they build them you'll see it you'll see a hurricane goes through and you'll see that one house standing that's a new build house or when it has hurricane proof windows and a brand new roof Right, Probably, right, that will help as well, <laughs> definitely. So those are all little factors that can help with it. But the roof age right now is the main rating factor for all the carriers. Because that's the main rating factor now, it obviously is really important to kind of understand the situation with the rules and the ages involved. I was in a situation where a buyer was interested in purchasing a home that was uh, had a shingle roof. To replace that roof is $30,000, okay, that's shingle. And now if we're talking about a tile roof, we're now talking about way more money because tile is more oh, yeah. expensive than shingles. And so naturally, a lot of viewers, a lot of people are moving to, the, to Florida, including myself, not moving here, but living here. I'm thinking, well, does that mean I have to get a new roof every 10, 15 years. I have a tile roof. I still consider it a relatively new roof, but I spent $35,000 seven years ago. Now my, my next door neighbor, almost the same size house is getting a new roof and he's getting quotes at 70 to $80,000. So we're talking about a lot of money. And so a lot of people naturally are worried about, well, do I have to exchange my roof every 10 years? Tell us a little bit about that. And so, maybe we'll calm down those fears. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I could calm down those fears. Okay. Um, there's always a carrier that, you know, we have surplus lines carriers. There's always a carrier I can somehow fit an old roof into, um, but you may pay more in your premium okay. for the older roofs. The carriers are looking, the standard is about on a shingle 10 to 15 years. 10 now 15. on the tile mm -hmm. roofs, they give you a little more lifespan on those. They're about 20 to 25 years. I've written coverage on 30 year old tile roofs as well the, the roofs are absolutely fine so again um, it just depends on your upkeep and how you're taking care of those roofs a lot of the tile roofs you want to keep like the mildew and mold and that type of stuff off to keep them from deteriorating so you just want to do your upkeep on the roofs but as for the shingle it is about 10 to 15 years here in Florida and then the tile roofs and the metal roofs work about the same they love the metal roofs metal roofs are, are they look good no too <laughs> So, those, so if you are going to replace your roof, I would always look at going to the metal roof. Those get the most lifespan with the carriers, but they are about in the same time frame as the tile roofs. Now for somebody that has homeowner's insurance, knowing that the insurance rates are going to go up, is there a cap on how much it can go up with a current carrier that you, you know, that 
when it's associated with. Talk to us about kind of what the caps are if you're currently with a certain carrier and when prices could dramatically increase and what situations. So each carrier has to file their rate increases with the state and it has to be approved. So if you have a rate increase, let's say, I would say the average rate increases right now, I'm seeing anywhere from 13% up to 30%. Again, just okay. depending, just depending. Um, it goes off with the same rate. carrier with the same carrier okay so each individual policy they have to prove why they want to increase it by so much um, mm -hmm. and if the state feels it's feasible then they'll approve uh, what they're coming in at but um, they can't just say hey we're picking this rate for you and this is what you have to pay it all has to go through a process to get there now that's with the admitted carriers now on the surplus line carriers that are not admitted in the state they can pick their rates. They can tell you, here's your renewal. They are a little more flexible though. A lot of times you're gonna get a better rate with them and they can react quicker to things like Hurricane Ian. Right after Hurricane Ian, we were already seeing the surplus lines immediately changing their rates because they knew there were gonna be a ton of claims on that one. As opposed to the admitted carriers, we didn't start seeing those rate increases really until March of this year and they're still coming through now. So they can just react a little bit quicker. But as for like saying, the cap is like 10% and that's it, the highest they can go. It's not, it's depending on what the state will approve them to increase it. My homeowner's insurance is $5,000. You actually helped me get it. And I know that you got me the best rate as you could. My home is a little bit older now. It's renovated. I have a relatively new roof, but I don't have hurricane proof windows, which I'm trying to get, right? It's very expensive. I'm getting quotes in the uh, $100,000 range, but that's a whole nother story. But let's just assume I were to get these hurricane proof windows done. Mm -hmm. How much would that actually save me in, in insurance costs? The average savings on um, all opening protection, and I do want to mention it has to be every single opening. Your doors have to be hurricane proof. Um, some people forget about that little window in the garage. That has to be hurricane proof as well. That side door in the garage has to be hurricane proof. So every <laughs> single opening of your house would have to do it to get the uh, discount applied. And it will put a savings of about 20 to 30 percent with the carrier. That may not seem huge, but when you apply that year after year after yeah. year, because you'll get that savings continuously with a, your current carrier or a new carrier you're going to go to, you're going to have it applied. So it eventually will pay for itself in savings. But initially, you're going to probably see a 20 to 30 percent savings. I'm not doing it to get the uh, insurance rate discount because it's gonna cost me so much money to, to get hurricane proof windows to begin with. But it's nice knowing that I'll be getting a little bit of a discount, so. <laughs> the safety factor of it. Yeah, true. Definitely, and, and it does protect your home. You know, the first thing to go during a hurricane is roof and windows. So you have those protection, you have a updated roof and windows, you're gonna be pretty solid during a hurricane. So if you had a specific question, I'm actually going to read this to you. A friend in my community just received a notice that their policy was being dropped because they are within three miles of the coast and their home was built before 1982. Are many other carriers doing the same thing? Is this a new thing? So it is not a new thing. This has been around as long as I've known insurance. Okay. Uh, so they, there's certain carriers that like to ride along the coast. There's certain carriers that don't want to ride along the coast. We have some that they, they literally will just exclude it if you're within two miles of the coast. Doesn't matter. And then there's other carriers that will take it and um, some carriers they want it to go through underwriting. They want to see how old the roof is. There's a lot of other factors they want to see. Um, being that close to the to the coast but again there is always surplus lines for us to go to if one of the admitted carriers are not taking it we do always have those surplus lines and we can write anything in surplus lines we can find a carrier that will pretty much accept any home on surplus lines so there's always somewhere that we can place so define what a surplus line is exactly 
So your surplus lines are not admitted in the state of Florida. And the difference between that, um, so your admitted carriers are like the Olympus who you're with, Citizens, those type of carriers, and they have the FIGA backing. So that means if they were to go insolvent, the state of Florida would step in and pay their claims. We just saw this with United Property and Casualty. They went insolvent after Hurricane Ian, and the state of Florida has stepped in and is paying their claims. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are with a non-admitted carrier, they don't have the backing of the state of Florida, so if they go insolvent, you are out of that claim getting paid. It's a big, huge difference. The whole thing on that, though, is these are big carriers. They're bigger than our admitted carriers here in Florida. These are like your Lloyds of London carriers, that type of carriers that have billions and billions of dollars. It's pretty uncertain that they are going to go insolvent. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Because they have a big business to begin with and it's probably right. very diversified. Does that also mean that the insurance through them would be more expensive, relatively speaking? Not necessarily. Okay. Um, and again, they can kind of write their policies like a la carte. So if you have like no other structures, they don't automatically throw 2% in or 10% in. Um, we can put zero. So we can kind of play with the coverages to get them where you want it to be. Now there are sometimes, yeah, they're going to be way more expensive expensive than the admitted carrier and that's why it's just good to shop them both. Right. Hopefully your insurance agents are doing that and they are shopping surplus lines and the admitted. So talk to us a little bit about Hurricane Ian and kind of the after effects. I do a lot of reading and researching to kind of find out what's going on in, in the market situation as it relates to insurance and what I'm hearing the newspapers talk about and also really getting feedback from people who are in this situation is that they're having a really difficult time to get the insurance companies to pay out, right, after a claim has been submitted. So what has been your experience as an agent? So I've had a little bit of both. I've had carriers that they were awesome. I mean, there was carriers writing checks like the next week and had adjusters right out there. And then I have had carriers that, you know, were dragging their feet and it's like you leave messages and you can't get a live person on the phone. So I've dealt with a little bit of both on that. The good news on that is if you do have a carrier that is dragging their feet, it's really important to get the Department of Insurance involved. That's when you need to go and make a complaint to the Department of Insurance. When you mm -hmm. make that complaint on that carrier, they have to answer within a certain amount of time. Or again, they are fine. If somebody called you for a homeowner's insurance quote, would you actually tell them that this company has done really bad when it comes to paying out claims, they've been really difficult to work with? Is this the type of advice you would give people? The whole point of us for selling insurance is to make sure you're protected. And if they're not going to be there when you need to be protected, I don't want to sell their product. So if I see a carrier that is completely terrible in paying claims, I'm going to avoid writing business with them. So they're going to lose all around eventually. Nobody's going to want to purchase their product and um, it's eventually going to put themselves out of business if they don't want to pay the claims. That being said, we have so many carriers that are out there and they are great and they are responsive during hurricanes. Where does citizen property fall into this? Well, I will tell you just personal experience with citizens. They were awesome during okay. Hurricane Ian. I was so impressed. I did not expect, I did not have high hopes. Being the state-sponsored program, you'd like, uh, government insurance, how's that going to work? They did a great job. Of course, there's people who have complaints, with, and there's always going to be complaints, and someone's not going to be happy with how right. things were handled. But I would say as a whole, and we have a lot of clients that are with citizens, and as a whole for the people who had claims with them, they really were responsive. You know, lots of companies are making it really difficult to get your claims paid out. So it's important to really understand which companies stand behind what they're promising and you know working through somebody like you you can obviously give them that feedback there was a video on youtube that made its round it actually got a lot of views and i'm not going to name the name of the video or the person that put it out there but this person claimed that now in florida you don't just have to get homeowners insurance if you're financing but you're required to get flood insurance. I know that's not true, but 
tell us your perspective here. The requirement is coming from citizens. That's probably where they got that information. Citizens is requiring, if you are in a flood zone, they are requiring you to have flood insurance. Now, if you are in an ex, which, the next zone, which is not a flood zone, they are still going to make you require, they are going to require you to get flood insurance as well. However, they are not doing that until 2027. That has not been implemented yet. If you are in a flood zone, that has been implemented and they are making you get the insurance. As for any other carriers making this a requirement, I haven't seen them or heard about them. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for being on this call today. I really appreciate it. it. Is my there yeah, is there anything else you want to leave our viewers with? Well, I just want to let you know if there, if you're moving here or if you are here already and you have homeowner's insurance and you'd like me to take a look at it, I would be absolutely happy to. Um, even if you just have questions, just give me a call. Now, if you enjoyed this video, like this video, subscribe to this channel for Florida related information, especially as it relates to real estate and destinations. Now, if you're looking to purchase or sell in the Sarasota County or Manatee County region, I truly love hearing from all of you. Call me, email me anytime, text me reach out that way I can help you. And thank you so much for watching today. I always, always appreciate what you guys do. Take care.